If you search YouTube or Google, you will no doubt find any number of in-depth and perhaps better explanations comparing virtual machines and containers. My intent here is to introduce the basic differences, but to delve into the question why. You see, it's my humble opinion that answering why these models exist will give you a better understanding of the technology and tease out your curiosity to learn even more. My name is Rob Coventry. Today I'll introduce the basic modern computing models and explain why virtualization and containerization exist and what purpose they serve. Let's go into the first chart. This introduction depicts the key differences between the three models. First, bare metal. It's similar to desktop computing in that the operating system is installed directly on the server. And then, in turn, an application is installed of that on top of that operating system. Of course, multiple applications can be installed on top of the operating system, but in a server environment, scaling more than one application on an operating system can become troublesome. Virtualization addresses the scaling problem by providing each application its own space isolated from the other applications on the same machine. But virtualization benefits come more with some overhead, adding a hypervisor to manage each VM, which is made up of a guest operating system and the application. Containerization, or containers, take away that added overhead by virtualizing a single operating system with the container engine. Think of this as a different virtualization method, but more efficient. The container engine handles the application isolation and interface to the operating system under it. This introduced a more efficient virtualization model and a shorter path to the underlying hardware delivering better performance and faster provisioning time. Now let's go back in time and understand how we got where we are. During the client server era, servers ran monolithic applications that responded to hundreds or thousands of client requests at any given moment. Prevalent operating systems underneath that was Windows and Unix running the server's bare metal, and many versions of a given Unix were popular, <clears throat> which meant that because the applications were tied to the operating system, the application providers had to support many different operating systems, which slowed innovation. Applications that were tied to those advances of the underlying operating system kept us all, all from going any further uh, at, a, at a pace that we needed to. Client-server computing then could be thought of as a slight advance to from the traditional mainframe computing where client computers would run a much improved graphical user interface. During the internet, virtualization was inter, uh, ushered in. Well, I'm, you might want to say it was reintroduced because it actually was around long before on IBM mainframes. But distributed computing needed to take advantage of the spare horsepower that was delivered on new servers that came with multiple processors and tons more memory. And of course, they had that virtualization and isolation problem that they needed to solve. So virtualization could be thought of as a way to optimize the additional capacity and make those more powerful servers more cost efficient. I call it 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag. That created quite a market for one vendor in particular, VMware. To this day, VMware holds a large majority of the virtualization market. And underneath that, by 2010, two dominant operating systems for servers, Linux and Windows, dominated everybody. And Linux held the vast majority of the market. The introduction of mobile computing, Internet of Things, social media, artificial intelligence forced a breakneck speed where business outpaced the ability for IT to keep up. That new business pace was welcomed by cloud providers who gave them an off-site computing platform ready to meet their demand. Software as a service providers like Salesforce.com and Oracle, and Microsoft, Workday, and others gave business outlets to match the demand for their business pace. Amazon Web Services, Google, Microsoft, and other um, platform as a business um, offered off-site platforms to deliver business innovation. <clears throat> but with the convenience of pace and capacity comes with some trade-offs, cost, and risk. On average, businesses are using at least five cloud providers, according to a Gartner study, adding complexity to the cost. So, business and IT teamed up to seek a new universal computing model that could strike a balance of pace and cost. 
Ultimately, that means re replicating the computing experience both on-site and off-site. Cloud providers invented containerization because of its economic and operational benefits over virtualization. So those, it's, uh, it's only logical that those benefits can be delivered on-site and afford universal hybrid experience for businesses that they desire. Now, let's look into the benefits and trade-offs. First, virtualization requires more resources. With every VM comes that guest OS. That extra overhead for each application adds up quickly when virtualizing just a few applications. On the other hand, virtualization isolation is a benefit. The flip side of virtualization is providing that isolation because each operating system um, is, is within a VM and it provides a simpler security. I saw one video that compared the four or five surface points of security for VM versus the 367 sum for containers making VM better isolation and easier security. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily better security, it's just easier. Containers, on the other hand, perform better. As we saw, said earlier, because those containers have a shorter path to underlying hardware, they perform better. <clears throat> containers pr provision faster. Because there's no guest OS, provisioning is faster. It's easier, too. So, it only goes to say, then, the containers cost less because they take less resource and less labor. There's lower resource requirements, better performance, easier and faster provisioning. Containers cost less. Conclusion? Containers in Linux will help the cloud, area, cloud era meet its pace for business and deliver universal and hybrid experience. Thank you. Have a good day.